Well, hello everybody, UXW Bill here again for another computer video. And this time around, I'm digging way back into the archives when someone somewhere along the line, several years ago, probably at least two, when I would have made my Desk Pro EN fan speed control video, wrote me to ask and became aware of the fact that I had some Compaq Evo D500 and D510 computers. Like the Desk Pro ENs, these are small form factor computers. Unlike the Desk Pro ENs, these did not seem to come in a desktop style case. It was either small form factor or tower, where the Desk Pro had a lot more options. Small form factor, tower, desktop, and a convertible case that could be switched between them. As you can see, I have a few of the Evo D500 series systems. These were probably the last really great systems that Compaq produced for business use before everything went to HP in a hand basket. Some of them are right on the line because some of them have HP markings and other ones have Compaq markings. This one right here has been cosmetically cleaned up and restored. These three are functional but have not necessarily been restored. So they have sticker residue on them and stuff like that but they're fully functional. And then this on top is a Compaq Desk Pro EN small form factor machine to give you an idea of how the Evo D500 is really not much more than what a Desk Pro EN wanted to be when it grew up, so to speak. What I have right here, the Compaq Desk Pro EN is on the left and an Evo D500 is on the right. The biggest difference between these two machines is that the Evo systems have a Pentium 4 processor while the Desk Pro outside of one very elusive Desk Pro EX tower model that I have never actually seen and I question its existence, the Desk Pro EN and E series in general never saw a Pentium 4 processor. There's the motherboard in the Desk Pro EN, small form factor machine, Intel Pentium 3 1 gigahertz processor, PC 133 SD RAM, integrated NVIDIA AGP graphics, a riser to plug in a PCI card slot, which actually gave you three more slots for up to three devices, and then the power supply, which flips up to reveal the rest of the motherboard. Contrast and compare this to the Evo series machines. They too have a removable PCI bus riser, but it only gives you two slots to work with. The layout is reversed from that of the Desk Pro. In the Desk Pro, the hard drive is on the left and the optical is on the right. The floppy drive remains, it's flipped as well, so it does not remain in the same place. The motherboard is of course a different layout, and in this case, they're using PC2700 or PC3200 DDR memory with an Intel 845 or 845G chipset, depending on whether it's a D500 or a D510. It has a Pentium 4 processor, either an early or late socket 478 processor. Upgrades are possible. This one's got a couple of swollen caps. It still works just fine. The power supply is on the opposite side, but it too flips up and out in the same way as the one on the Desk Pro. Now by default, these systems actually do have an AGP slot. Some of them do not have Intel 845 integrated graphics, whereas others do. Both the Desk Pro EN and the Compaq Evo D500 or 510 series machines share a very similar integrated audio solution, and in fact it sounds about the same. Now fan speed control is supported on the Desk Pro EN series systems, because there is an analog device's fan speed controller on the motherboard. It's a little more of a mixed bag with the Evo series machines. Some of them have the same single fan, no RPM, no tachometer monitoring that the Desk Pro EN has. Others have a much more capable analog devices chip that actually lets you control the speed of not only the front processor fan right there, but also the power supply fan and yet others have a standard microsystems fan controller that is integrated into the low pin count I.O. controller that's responsible for parallel ports, PS2 keyboard and mouse, floppy drive stuff, system timekeeping and things like that. The ones with the standard microsystems part 
do not seem to allow for fan speed control through external software. Only the system itself can do it when it senses that things are getting hot. The card of ports found on a Desk Pro EN and a Compaq Evo D500 series machine are largely similar, although some of the Evo D500 machines actually do not have any support for onboard video. They require that you use an AGP card. Whereas practically every Desk Pro EN had integrated video, be it an NVIDIA AGP adapter or Intel 815 integrated graphics. Other than that, the ports are largely the same. They both have integrated Ethernet and a full card of leg legacy ports, a place to plug in power, a couple of PCI slots, two for the Evo, three for the Desk Pro, an AGP slot that's only found on the Evo, and USB ports. Now in early versions of the Evo D500, the chipset is an Intel 845 and it only supports USB 1.1 transfer rates. The later machines, such as the Evo D510, they support USB 2.0 as they are based on the Intel 845G chipset, which is a slightly newer revision. Unlike the Desk Pro EN, which only has the microphone and headphone ports on the front, the Compaq Evo computers have two USB ports operating at either USB 1.1 or 2.0 rates depending on the Intel chipset that's used. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. This particular Compaq Evo D510 is powered by a Pentium 4 2.4 GHz processor with 512 megabytes of memory the original 40 gigabyte hard drive was bad, and so I put in a handy quantum 30 gigabyte drive that was stolen from some old iMac a long time ago, and at this point it would probably much rather be in a hard disk retirement home somewhere, because it's a little bit pokey, but it gets the job done. As mentioned earlier, some revisions of the Evo D500 series systems support fan speed control. These systems are the ones that are based on the analog device's fan speed monitor and controller. And as you can see, the RPM of the front processor fan is reported. However, SpeedFan recognizes two speed controllers, and each one does a different thing on these particular machines. Speed 03, as SpeedFan identifies it, turns up the power supply fan speed. Listen carefully. It takes a while. When throttled down, the fan responds much more quickly. The speed 01 setting actually controls the speed of the front panel fan. This one is reflected in the tachometer reading as well as the sound level. You can wind it up to positively screaming. It's running at a whopping 6,122 revolutions per minute. We'll slow it down. It seems that Compaq was pretty conservative with the fan speed settings on these systems. They run the fans at a very slow speed to keep them quiet. 
Unfortunately, this results in the system running hotter than I'd like, so on the systems where fan speed control can be accomplished by using the speed fan software, I have set up a custom profile to keep the fans just a notch above their minimum speed so they're still quiet but they move more air, they hold the system temperatures down, and speed fan can automatically control them if its logic feels that things are getting too hot. Now the compact built-in business grade audio on this machine is only a single speaker playing through a tiny hole with a tiny cone and through even more holes in the side of the case. But even so, its performance is really not bad and the maximum volume that it can manage to output is pretty good as well. So here's one of the more entertaining entries from my iTunes music library to demonstrate how the sound is like on this particular computer. That's maximum volume. Baby Bumble and the Stingers, Mop the Hooper, Rachel Singers, Lonnie Mac, a twang and itty, he's been ring, we're going steady, take it easy, take me high, 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 high
depending on which model of system you have, you'll find a different indication on the motherboard and possibly even different initials. For example, in this Evo D500, the other one was a D510, you'll see the same designed by Compaq Engineers in Houston, Texas, with a picture of the state of Texas, and you'll also find a race car with the initials of what were presumably the people on the design team. But enough about that, there are a few other interesting things about the hardware that bear mentioning. One of my systems was repaired under warranty at some point in its life. It originally shipped with a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Now sometimes when a computer manufacturer has to repair a machine under warranty, they can't always get the same parts that they had when they used it. It's obvious that this happened late enough in the machine's lifetime that the HP Compact merger was complete because it doesn't say replace with Compact Spare any longer and it has an HP tag of some kind on it. This was supposed to be a 20 gigabyte drive originally. In reality, this is a MaxTor Diamond Plus Diamond Max Plus 8 ATA133. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's a sticky tag on it that has been put on there to make this drive appear as though it's a 20 gigabyte drive. But when the machine is powered up, it gives the model number of a drive that is a 40 gigabyte drive. It turns out that HP issued a set maximum capacity command to this drive using an appropriate tool. I was able to undo this and regain the other 20 gigabytes of storage by simply using the HDAT, HDAT2 hard disk configuration and testing utility which is available as a free download. You can search the web for it. Mac store hard drives are still crap. Anyway, in conclusion, there you have the complete tour of the Compaq Evo D500 and D510 small form factor personal computers. Thank you for watching and I'm sorry it took so long.